Hey, hey, Johnny, I'm back. I got all the pinholes and stuff and all the welding done on a boat. Yeah, there's those tiny pinholes and I couldn't get it hot enough to braid it, so I used uh, Marine JB Weld just to fill in a couple little pinhole leaks. Now I am in the process of lining the bottom of the boat with styrofoam before I bolt quarter inch HDPE plastic on, on the that. So that'll line the bottom of the boat. Now you're getting my drift. And what I'm going to use to put this polystyrene to the bottom is Permatex Automotive Headliner Adhesive. It's basically spray rubber cement. You can get like carpet pad or stick down outdoor carpet. Spray glue. It's basically spray rubber cement. And it, this stuff doesn't seem to eat up the foam. You get certain ones, it'll just dissolve that foam away. But you're like, Ronnie, why are you putting foam on the bottom of the boat? Why don't you just put that plastic on the bottom? Well, number one, and, the, and anything but foam, right? Well, this extruded polystyrene foam, you know, like I said, you can take and punch a hole through it, you know, and hit it on something. No, I don't have nothing handy. Here, I'll show you. Like, ah, oh, that stuff ain't worth the crap. See the corner here? I'll hit it. Yeah, see how it caged it in a little right there? Let me work on it. Uh, you know what I mean. But see, it dents it and caves it in that easy. Why would you want to use that? Well, it's going to have this plastic over it. And this stuff's pretty much bulletproof for impact. That's a quarter inch thick. Uh, it'd take a heck of a lot. You're about to drill through it. It won't even crack. That's why it's HDPE plastic and it's super slick. But that right there, I had to push pretty hard. The compression strength to squish this stuff, okay, to make it squish down, like I'm doing right there, and I'm only pushing on a corner, that's probably a half of a square inch, and I bet I'm, I'm probably pushing in a good 40 pounds, 35, 40 pounds on a half inch. This stuff is 25 pounds per square inch, okay, square inch, like this big. From here to here, it takes 25 pounds to smash that down, to get it compressing down, okay? So, over the whole bottom of the boat, figure out 25 PSI, 25 pounds per square inch compression strength that it'll take with nothing on it, you know, that's just on it with that plastic, it's going to spread the load, okay? But if you figure out a square foot, which would be... Basically, you know, there to here, between the foam of my arm here, that's about a square foot. A square foot's 144 inches. That's 3,600 pounds it would take to squish that foam in an area 12 inches by 12 inches. And that plastic, will it's never going to have nothing go through the bottom of this unless somebody takes a drill to it. Okay? And, uh, why am I putting it on? If I just bolt the plastic on, then as you see, I'll have this big gap here. Even if I bolt through the runners, which I really don't want to do, or strikes, whatever they call them, you'll have this gap, and then it'd want to flex. You see that? Okay. And that stuff flexes very easy. So if I have the foam on, then, like this, then I leave, and I want it flat. Oh, that's the outside one, excuse me. They're different sizes, each one. You gotta measure everything. Okay, that goes there. This one, we'll go in here and get glued down. Okay, now, look at the difference at the gap. See what kind of a gap I got now? Instead of from here to here for that plastic to flex, I only have inch and a quarter gap. It's 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 not going to flex. Okay, you see my finger? I think I can get getting it in here. It's glaring again. But yeah, it's not going to flex. And if it does flex a little, it, it'll push down against the straight. But if I just bowl it straight on, then you got this big wide gap. It, 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 it wouldn't be very good. So yeah, 3,600 pounds per square inch to compress this. And I can't remember the impact resistance on that HDPE per square inch. I think it's well over seven or 8,000 PSI by a flat punch to drive through it. 
I'll have to check the specs on it. But yeah, it's well, it's well over uh, the 25 PSI that this foam is to punch through it. So, you know, even if you just go by the specs of this stuff, 3,600 pounds per square foot, it'll take an impact of without collapsing. And it's not going to, you have to take something really sharp and pointed and, or drill or something or, to cut through it. So there's what I'm doing so far. I'm going to have to run it back to Norfolk, though. I think I'm going to have to get some shorter bolts, stainless, all stainless, after I get this glued down. It's about 80 out here in the shade, but ain't bad. I finally got a little breeze kicking, but I got an inch and a quarter of rain uh, into yesterday afternoon, and now it's starting to evaporate. So when there ain't no breeze, it's awful humid and hot right here. But little tiny breeze is kicking up, and just enough where it ain't blowing my stuff away before I get it glued down, which is good. All right, I'll let you. I'll let you know how it goes. I'm gonna plastic weld that. I got two sheets of that HDPE, and I staggered the seams just to be safe to level any kind of compression areas and flex areas instead of one seam straight across this will make it firmer and solder and it will give it some more flotation too so hopefully that foam extra buoyancy will take away the extra weight of the hdpe quarter inch thick and it'll even out and just float like it usually would yeah, or maybe even a little higher in the water but yeah there you go uh, i'll let you know when i get the uh maybe i'll show you how to plastic weld i'll see how far i get today i just use a big electric soldering iron you can use a heat gun but i don't have the right side nozzle and uh, I, I, I you just you and i got the stuff you smell it together yeah, it's cool but yeah there you go Woo! sun's going behind the clouds for a little bit all right i gotta get back to work get this stuff glued down then i gotta make a run to town and i think get me some shorter bolts and uh i'm just gonna use nylocks uh, i'll show you when I, when i get done i'm using carriage bolts i can put through the bottom countersunk stainless steel and then bolted on the inside with inch stainless steel fender washers about that big around yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna sand this down at an angle with my air file my body, auto body air file so this is down to here and there so it actually lays flat so i don't have that top ridge because i'm afraid i'll slide sideways into the sandbar and I didn't rip it off so it's going to be bolted clear down direct to here you know that angle like this well it'll be like this if you look at the bottom that's what the top of the foam will look like it's going to come right to here and then i'll have the bolts running through right there about an inch out so yeah there you go that's my plan so far my engineering's working a lot better than that damn winch on that thing i got a secret harbor freight contacted me i got to send them a bunch of information they contacted me back finally after that third video i showed how you just bump that lever and when it's under pressure how it just pops loose and starts spinning and running away eh, something finally got their attention so i'm going to stay on them i'll let you know how it goes because that is a killing machine i'm gonna i'm gonna probably just put a chain on it to the handle or something for now if i go down the road or whatever so it don't bounce well i'll have straps on the back too but i'm going to design it and make a solid lock that you have to unlock i was looking at it like it'll take me the afternoon to do that to take it all apart and everything but for now i'll just chain it down so it can't go anywhere so that handle can't come flying around 100 mile an hour it does pop loose all right but yeah they did get a hold of me so give hover freight a little bit of credit but i think they're still selling them and stuff but i'm going to keep on them because there's no way you should have, be able to buy anything that dangerous off the shelf anywhere in the world let alone the united states all right love y'all peace have a heart have a heart uh, I'll be back. So far, my engineering stuff's getting going. Once I get the bottom done, I can start showing you how I'm going to build my long tail whole outdrive setup. I got all the parts. All right, man. Love you. Ciao. I'll be back.